Hey everyone, I'm Seth Perkins. This is Scott Perkins. We're the Bearded Butchers. Today, it's all about barbecue. And not just barbecue, we're gonna talk brisket. Right here on these carcasses, we're gonna show you how we pull a brisket. We're gonna show you how we trim it. And how are we gonna cook it, Scott? What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking one of these briskets and we're gonna take it to the big green egg. A little bit more of a charcoal. I'm going to show you what we do to set up for charcoal um, in terms of how, we, how we're going to trim the brisket. The other one's going to go on the Traeger, so we're going to be showing you how to set up for a pellet grill. Um, so yeah, we've got beautiful Angus cattle here. We're going to get them out on the floor. We're going to pull the briskets out of the carcass, and then um, we're going to be using some Victorinox equipment, and we're going to show you the best way to trim up these briskets, get them prepped, and then we're gonna, of course, season them with that beautiful Beard of Butcher Blend seasoning out to the smokers they go. So we have two whole carcasses hanging here. This is one steer and this is another steer. So off of these two animals, we can get a total of four briskets. Today we're only gonna get two. So we're just gonna use this first steer to get those. One brisket's gonna get seasoned with our black blend. The other one's gonna get seasoned with our original blend. So let's head to the processing floor Let's get these briskets cut. So in the cooler, when we broke this down, we actually made a, a cut. We counted up five ribs and we made a cut between the fifth and sixth rib. What that does, that's gonna mark us out for when we come across here. And um, so we go through the chuck. We're gonna be breaking obviously the chuck away from the rib. But when we come across here, we're, gonna, we're actually gonna cheat up a little bit and we're gonna get over here so we get a, a little bit bigger brisket. Um, I mean, come on, who doesn't want more brisket? And you have to recall or remind yourself that this part of the beef right here, this is actually the chest. And um, so this muscle right here, I mean, you can actually see these muscle fibers, it gets a ton of use. This thing's obviously trotting around all day, getting nice and big and fat and juicy, but this muscle is getting a lot of work. And that's why when we cook this thing, we're gonna talk about how important it is to get to the correct temperature because the flavor is gonna be awesome, but we wanna make sure that the tenderness matches it too. So let's just get started. We're gonna finish breaking this down between the chuck and the rib, pulling that eight inch breaking knife through there. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my six inch Victorinox and I'm gonna start about right here. And like Scott mentioned, we wanna sneak a little bit higher rather than just cut you know, through that fifth and sixth rib and come all the way across, you're gonna wind up with a real short brisket. So we're gonna sneak up a little bit higher make that cut and then right here, I'm just gonna come down a little bit because we'll continue cutting this all the way down here to that point, but so now I can just get my fingers behind this brisket and just start peeling it down. Now, not a lot of you are gonna actually do this part. This gets done at the packing house but we wanted to show you where it comes from because a lot of people have brisket and they have no idea, you know, what, where on the animal that it comes from. Right. And this is what, what you're going to see when we pull this off is essentially going to be what is referred to as a packer. Um, that just means that it's, it's one of these big, gnarly, heavy duty chunks of brisket. So essentially we're showing you where that packer comes from, how it's broke out of the carcass and then what we show you next is gonna be what you do with it once you get it in front of you. So there he broke it down between the chuck and the rib. This is a two-man process. I'm gonna go ahead and saw this off for him the rest of the way. Now we're gonna flip on our bandsaw and we're gonna break this brisket shank portion off of this arm and chuck portion. Now that we have that broke off, we can remove that shank. And from here, we can continue to extract these bones off the back of this brisket. Making sure you don't score the meat right here. Pull the bone out. We'll trim that up for some ground beef. This, folks, 
is a packer style beef brisket. Point, flat, you can square it up a little bit. So we're gonna do two different versions like we mentioned earlier. One of them we're gonna prep for more of a charcoal style grill where the fat renders down more than a pellet style grill. So on the pellet, for the pellet grill, we're gonna go ahead and remove this external fat and trim it up um, pretty well. So we'll show you uh, those steps. So here's the first brisket. We're gonna continue cutting this beef. Um, you know, all the retail cuts for our store, steaks, roasts, burgers, patties, all that stuff. July 4th right around the corner, Father's Day. So we're gonna have our meat cases packed with all those wonderful cuts. So we're gonna go ahead and get this half cut and then we will get the second half out of the cooler and we'll get our second brisket. All right, folks, there it is, our briskets times two. These weigh currently about 16 pounds a piece, give or take a little bit per brisket. They're pretty close to the same size. I think the meat cutter did an okay job. So now, like we mentioned, one is gonna stay pretty much untrimmed. We might knock just a little bit of that fat off for the charcoal, big green egg. And then the other one, we're gonna trim it up for the Traeger pellet grill. We're gonna do a cook of both all the way through. And at the end of the video, we're gonna slice them up. We're gonna show you how to cut against the grain. We're gonna season them, smoke them, slice them, and eat them. So next step, let's get these babies trimmed. Now it's time to trim the briskets, season them, and get them on the grills. But first of all, I wanna show you guys where we're at. This is the original building that was built on our farm here in Creston, Ohio. We've turned it into sort of our studio. Thought you guys would like to see it. It's pretty cool. All these old tools on the wall, hand-hewn beams. You just imagine the folks that built this building. So thought it'd be a pretty cool place to do a video like this, and there's gonna be more done in here in the future. Let's get started trimming these briskets. Snag them out of our cooler. We did go ahead and vacuum seal these. There's one. And number two. There's our briskets, and you saw them get cut off of the carcass. Now we wanna show you the trimming, the seasoning, all the way to the grill, the slicing. Before we get started, I wanna show you this. Toronox, some of our favorite knives. And inside this kit, I should mention, the last time this was used, is when I was on the uh, show, The Butcher, out in California. So just a little bit of anxiety when I go to rip this open because my heart starts beating. I think about being in front of those judges uh, for competition. But anyways, this is our knife set. This is the competition barbecue set from Victorinox. It's pretty cool, I gotta show you real quick. Pairing knife, there's a boning knife, eight inch breaking knife, a real nice slicing knife, scimitar, you gotta be careful with these because these are razor sharp. And then this is our, our slicing knife that we'll use to slice the brisket and a honing steel. This is available on Victorinox website as a kit. You can buy it there. We'll throw a link in the description. If you're the serious barbecuer, you might wanna get this this is also available by the piece on Victorinox website. So check it out today. We're gonna to be using this kit. I'm gonna start with trimming these briskets using the six inch Victorinox boning knife. So let's go ahead and get started. I should mention that if somebody's not comfortable using a blade maybe this large, go ahead and work down to the paring knife. Use something a little bit smaller um, maybe you're less intimidated by it, but today I'm gonna go ahead and use this blade. Let's set these aside. We'll just get started. The first brisket we're gonna start with is 16.53 pounds. This one's gonna go on the Traeger, and I wanna show you what we like to do and how we like to trim our briskets going on a pellet style grill. So you have to remember that when you're smoking a brisket, on a pellet style grill such as a Traeger, the fat isn't gonna render down quite like it does on say a charcoal grill like the Big Green Egg. So we're gonna do these two different styles. We're gonna show you both. As I'm trimming these, you're gonna see Scott prepping the grill. So you're gonna see him adding the rockwood charcoal. You're gonna see him building in his wood chunks 
and doing things like that. But let's go ahead and just get started. So when we pulled this off the carcass, you saw we, we kind of squared it up. But at this point, we're going to go ahead and just start removing the fat. So I like to just start up here on this thick side. So for a pellet style brisket, we're going to leave just a little bit of fat cover, maybe a quarter of an inch or so on the top of this brisket. I should mention, you guys are probably wondering why I'm using a disposable cutting board. This is a Stark board. We've mentioned these in our videos before. The reason why I put this on top of the wooden cutting board is I want to do some seasoning and I want to do it right on top of this disposable cutting board so I don't have to uh, stain and wash my wooden tables up as much. So let's go ahead and just knock some of this fat off of here. And I want, like I said, I want to leave just about a quarter of an inch. Knock it down to where you feel, you know, you're comfortable. You can take off as much as you'd like. At any point, you feel like that knife maybe is losing that edge a little bit. Grab your steel. This has a smooth side and a rough side. So depending on where you're at with your edge, you can go ahead and use whichever side you need. That's part of that eight piece competition barbecue kit from Victorinox. A lot of folks have been talking about when we steal our knives and we do it over the meat, we wanna make it clear, these steels do not take any of the actual knife material off of the knife. A diamond steel actually take some of the metal away from the blade. So if you were using a diamond steel, you wouldn't want to be over top of the meat. You'd want to wipe the knife, wipe the, the steel or whatever. These, however, um, all you're going to do is just simply roll that edge back into place. They do not take any metal off of the blade. Good point, Scott. Thanks for bringing that up. So on this side, just a little bit of this fat. As we mentioned before, point flat. This is a full pack, packer brisket. But right here in the middle, there's this fat seam. So we're going to go ahead and remove some of this fat out of this seam. You can see I'm using my pressure with my knife, use my hand to kind of get underneath that meat a little bit, cut that fat out of there. You can get as much of this out as you'd like. I'm not going to go too far inside there because I do want to leave just a little bit of that. Go ahead and flip it over and now I'll use the tip of my knife. Maybe you, at this point you know this is where you want to use your paring knife since it's a smaller blade. Still very sharp and just peel this back a little bit like so and then just cut this big chunk of fat out of there. like that. It's looking pretty good. It's about where I want it. Like I said, for a pellet style grill, we are going to leave just a little bit of this fat on there. You can see that beautiful marbling inside that prime Angus brisket. So um, I'd like to point out here, if you have any venison trim, elk trim, bear, anything like that. Maybe you want to make it into some uh, further processed items. This is a good, some good beef fat um, to use to make, you know, maybe smokies or summer sausage or something like that. So keep that in mind. If you do end up getting a bunch of meat cut off with your fat, you can go back through and you can trim that meat out. And you could even grind it um, into some hamburgers if there's enough of it there. But uh, like I said, you certainly don't have to throw that away. You can use it however you wish. All right, so at this point, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get this one seasoned that's going on the Traeger grill. How's it going, Scott? Good. Getting her lit? Um, yeah, so I got my charcoal bed laid just real quick with a big green egg. I actually, um, I'm using almost exactly 10 pounds of rockwood charcoal. It's an extra large big green egg. We love rockwood. It can be um, ordered straight to your door, so we'll put a link in the description. 10 pounds of charcoal. I've also layered it with some rockwood hickory chip or chunks and um, just getting ready to hit it with my loof lighter. So I'm really feeling good about the way the charcoal bed's laid and it's time for fire in the hole. I was waiting to hear gunshots. <laughs> While Scott's getting a big green egg lit, 
we're going to get this brisket seasoned. Today, we're going to do two different flavors of our Beard of Butcher Blend seasonings. The brisket that's going in the Traeger, we're going to use our black seasoning. The brisket that's going in the Big Green Egg, we're going to use the OG, the original seasoning. Remember, if you order a 4.5 pound bucket on our website of any of our flavors, it's going to come with a free bottle of the same flavor. So if you're doing smoking like this, you're doing briskets, pork butts, ribs, you're going to be using a lot of it. We highly recommend that you snag one of these buckets of deliciousness. The equivalent of 12 bottles of seasoning in one bucket. Nice sealable lid. You can seal it back up. You can refill your shaker as needed. Pretty cool deal. So we'll throw a link in as well. So I'm going to take my, my shaker, my six ounce shaker of black. You might want wonder what is in our black Beard Butcher Blend seasoning. This is a mix of some spices we're not going to tell you. But it has coffee in it and it has molasses. We named it black because of course the coffee but when you put this on products that you're going to smoke the bark that it creates is awesome everybody's looking for that bark and that's the one that's going to do it so let's just go ahead and get started i peeled the uh freshness sticker off of there the seal and i like to hold the bottle you know pretty high off the meat and then that way you get it evenly dispersed you can see how nice that's being dispersed onto that brisket. So we're gonna go ahead and just put, put a pretty good amount of seasoning on here. You can't really over season something like this. So we're gonna go ahead and just work our way around, get the edges, because we wanna get as much of that Bearded Butcher Black seasoning on there as possible. So now we're gonna go ahead and flip it over and we're gonna do the same thing on this side. And you're gonna see what awesome bark this puts on the product. If you haven't tried a coffee rub, and we recommend ours, of course, because we think it's the, the bomb. If you haven't tried it on when you're smoking something, gotta, you got to try it. The bark is just can't be beat. Some people, when we, when we repeat words over and over, they like to say they should take a shot every time we say it. Usually it's membrane <laughs> or uh, incredible eating incredible, experience. Incredible eating experience. This time, it's going to be bark. So every time I say bark, do what you want with it. This is seasoned. We're going to let it set for just a little bit. Let some of those juices start absorbing out of that brisket. The seasoning is going to adhere to the meat real nice. I should mention that you don't need, you know, any olive oil on here. You don't need any mustard to keep that rub on. The seasoning itself is going to stick and adhere real nice to the meat. So at this point, this brisket is ready to go on the Traeger. Let's start on the one for the big green egg. Brisket number two. As that brisket sits there for a little bit, we're gonna let that some of that moisture absorb out of that cut a little, little just for a little bit. We're gonna get started on the second one that's gonna be for the big green egg. So this one, if you remember what I said, we're not gonna trim as much fat off of it, but we are gonna take just a little bit. Um, the fat is gonna render down a lot more on this simply because we're using the charcoal grill versus the pellet. It's what we've noticed. You could, if you're feeling confident, Get out your eight inch breaking knife that comes in that set that I talked about and use that if you'd like. Just remember to be careful with it. And I'm just gonna knock some of this heavy off of here. Not taking is not near as much off though. If you notice, I take my hand and I put my hand behind where I'm cutting. I never leave it here and pull towards my hand. I always put it behind it, holding the cut back here. Because if that knife, if you're gonna cut yourself, it's gonna be when it slips through that fat. Or if, you know, if I'm, maybe I'm not using my hand, I'm always gonna hold it up here out of the way until I need to grab a hold of that fat and pull it. Or you use it like this and you cut you know, away from yourself like that. So just knock a little bit of that heavy fat off the top. You can see I'm not taking near as much off here. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over. Maybe I'll, just for the heck of it, use my little paring knife. See how sharp and this thing is. Dig just a little bit of that fat out of there. Like that. Maybe take just a little bit out of where that flat meets that point.
pretty much ready to go in my book. So this time we're going with the original seasoning. All right. <laughs> I was trying to flip my bottle of seasoning like I do my knives, but anyways, this time it's the original's turn. Here again, same thing, 4.5 pound bucket of deliciousness. Comes with that free bottle. And I used probably two thirds of a bottle, maybe three quarters on that first brisket. So just to give you an idea, that's about what I used seasoning wise. Go ahead and get that seal off. And let's just get started. This one doesn't have the coffee in it. This is just our original. You can see it has a little bit more pepper, sea salt based, they're both sea salt based. You can see it's a little bit, has a little bit more orange color. So it doesn't have that coffee in there. Go ahead and get that top all nice and seasoned. Flip it over. I wanna take a minute, thank you guys, because we just hit 325,000 subscribers on YouTube, almost 33 million views. We're sending seasonings all over the world. You guys have been awesome. Just had a moment here when I was seasoning this brisket and wanted to thank you because it's very humbling. Um, we built this business from scratch. We poured a lot of heart and soul into it. It's got our dad's picture on the bottle. It means a lot to us, so um, we're really connected to the brand and just wanted to say thanks. We appreciate all you guys. It really means a lot. You know, we're all about faith, family, and food around the Perkins clan. It's, just, it's the little things in life that, you know, that mean the most. So when you can get together with family and friends, eat some good food, some barbecue, it's what it's all about. There we go. Hit that just a little bit more. I think we're ready to go on the grills. This one's been sitting here for maybe 10 minutes, 15, and you can see some of that moisture is starting to come out of that brisket. Seasoning's adhering really nice to that, to that meat. Let's check in over here on, on Scott. The smoke's rolling. Just getting it set up. How's um, it going? It's going great. I want to get rid of that dirty smoke. So that's one thing we don't really want to put it on when it's that white billowy, what we would call bitter smoke. So um, at this point, we're just going to get this thing rolling like we want. I've actually connected the Big Green Egg Egg Genius. We're gonna be running that for our pit overnight. I just gotta keep our temperatures dialed in right where we want them. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing cleared out, get this sweet blue semi-transparent smoke that we love. It gives us clean taste, rolling, and get our meat on. Somebody's gonna ask about the cap, smokeware. They're on our website with our logo. They fit medium large and extra large big green egg if you want one grab one off the website i know somebody's going to ask so we gotta throw that in there at this time let's fire up the ironwood 885 our pellet bin is full of oak pellets and i'm going to go ahead and pull the probe for now we'll put that in later and we'll set an alarm i'm going to start this out at um what do you think scott 200, 225, what temperature are we going with to try to keep up with the, with the egg? You um, want, I'd say 225. You want to do 225? Yeah. So in order to keep up with the egg, because we know the egg's going to run a little bit hotter, we're going to run them both at 225. So 225, we're going to press, press ignite to start. Another thing about this is, since this is the ironwood, between 165 and 225, you can run it in super smoke. So we're gonna hit super smoke mode. Ironwood in the timber line has that option. So with the Traeger grill, the new models, don't forget you wanna light these with the lid shut. So we're gonna go ahead and close the lid. We're gonna wait for it to get up to temp. We're ready to rock and roll. We came into work this morning about five o'clock, Scott and I did, along with Sean, of course, Spencer. And we butchered Make meat. that AM, because <laughs> it is 8.44 PM. Right. <laughs> But I wanted to explain to you why we're out here as the sun is setting over Creston, Ohio. The reason being is that we wanted to time this 
so that we could wrap these at about 165 degrees. So we're gonna start them tonight with Egg Genius on this one. We're gonna use the app on our phone on the Traeger and we're gonna try to time it so that we can get in here tomorrow morning at the perfect time to wrap them both at 165-ish degrees and put them back on the grill to that sweet temp of 203 to 205. So that's why we're in here um, as the sun is setting. We're doing an all-night smoke. This one, seasoned with the uh, OG original. They're all trimmed up and they're ready to go on the grills. Big green egg, Traeger. Next step, to the grills they go. Your pit ready? It's at temp. My pit's ready. The grills are hot. Check it out. Sweet blue. We talk about this all the time. Um, it's semi-transparent, sweet blue smoke. That's going to be the really clean, um, low acidic smoke. So at this point, I'm going to grab the brisket that Seth trimmed up. And you know what? You do that, I'll get down and dirty. I got gloves on. So on to the big green egg she goes. Oh, she's a, she's a beauty. Now meat likes to spread out as it cooks. So we're gonna kind of scrunch it a little bit, keep it all in the family here. Go ahead and take my meat probe, put that in fattest portion right there in the point. Good night, sweet brisket, good night. Big green egg brisket, it's been put on the grill. Now it's time for the Traeger brisket. Go ahead and lift that lid. Place that big hunk of meat right in the middle of that grate. I wanna show you at this point, it's important to make sure you put your, place your probe in the thickest portion of that brisket. And that thickest portion is gonna be up in that point, that point end, not down here in the flat. Because you have to think, if you put that probe down here, this is obviously gonna cook quicker. So this portion won't be cooked enough. So let's go ahead and now that we have it probed, we're gonna put our probe in the port. It's gonna ask me if I wanna set a probe alarm. Yes, I do. I wanna set that for 165. I'm gonna hit set. Now our probe set to 165, our grill temp is 225. We're gonna close the lid and we're gonna let this baby sit all night long. So Traeger, Big Green Egg, they're both holding temp and we're gonna check back in the AM. Okay, it's just a little over eight hours. The sun is now coming up in the east. The coffee's hot. And uh, we're in the mid 60s and ready to wrap on these. So I've got unwaxed peach paper, butcher paper. Um, I'm just gonna cut two sections about, about an arm's length. This makes it nice. You have something like this paring knife right here. Cut these two, nothing fancy, about an arm's length. And then uh, I'm just gonna slide them back like this so I can wrap my brisket in them. Let's take a look. Dialed right in, bang, 225. It's gonna be the first look at this puppy. Oh, oh, that just looks amazing. Some of that fat's rendered down right there. We put it in fat side up. I'm gonna grab it, wrap it. All right, little pro tip. Doubled up my gloves, pull off the outside pair, and I don't need to change gloves. All right, nothing too fancy here. I'm just gonna grab my peach paper. Reasons why we're using peach paper, this is uh, gonna allow us to keep some of that 
beautiful bark on there and still get us to pull through this stall that you almost always hit right in your mid 60, 160s. Back on, fat side up. Probe goes right back in that point end and we're weighing smoking. Now it's Seth's turn on the Traeger. Scott's got his brisket wrapped off the big green egg. Now it's time to go to the Traeger. My probe says it's perfect. Woo. Check that out, Scott. I think we nailed it. Let's see what she says. Checking it multiple places. Heading up into those mid 160s. 165. It's time to wrap. Go ahead and get our probe out of there. Woo. That looks amazing. So just like Scott did on the big green egg, nothing fancy. Keeping the fat side up. Just gonna wrap this up. Sort of like a present. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna put this paper down this way. If you saw the way I wrapped my birthday presents and my Christmas presents, pretty much the same style. So this time we use the Traeger butcher paper and we've got it wrapped back up. So let's go ahead and put this back on the Ironwood 885. Fat side up, just like we started. Right in the center of that grate. We'll take our probe, push it right through the butcher paper. We're gonna close our lid. At this point, now that these briskets are both wrapped, we're gonna go ahead and bump the temperature of these grills up 50 degrees. So we're gonna go from 225 to 275, and then we're gonna meet that temp of 203 to 205, get these things in our cooler, and let them rest. So we're gonna go ahead and just bump the temp up, 275. Scott's gonna to go to the Egg Genius over here on the big green egg, and he's gonna do the same thing. Since I'm running the Egg Genius on the egg, makes it super simple. I just go to my app, and I dialed it up the pit temp to 275, showing my meat probe temp, 163. And now we wait. So as the sun comes up over Creston, Ohio, we're gonna finish drinking our coffee. We're gonna go in the meat shop. We got some work to do. These briskets, they're gonna finish. And then uh, we get to look forward to lunch. Check back. We've met temp. It's been just over three hours since we wrapped these. We did bump our grill temps up to 275, if you remember. We've got the heat resistant gloves on. Grill heat aid, get a pair. We'll throw in a link. These go over 930 degrees Fahrenheit. Pretty awesome gloves. Anyways, there she is. You can feel the jiggle. That probe, just by removing that probe, you can tell that brisket is gonna be super tender. And it's, you can tell that it's the way it's moving around. She's ready to go. So let's just go ahead and take our brisket we're gonna move it over here into our cooler. We're gonna place it in our cooler. We're gonna let it rest. So the Traeger brisket is finished. It's in the cooler. We're gonna shut our grill down and right along with it is the big green egg. Now it's Scott's turn. Just wanna show you guys real quick. So this was what? What are we, 13 hours total cook time? Right yeah, there. Uh, but since we lit, yeah, closer to 12. 12 hours? Yeah, since we hit the ignite button. I wanted to show you, a lot of people ask, you know, how many pellets it takes to do a cook like that. Last night, this was completely full of oak pellets, and you can see we've burnt down um, not, not even half, so maybe closer to just over a third. Just to uh, let you know, to show you, that's about how much we used in 12 hours, so I thought I'd throw that in there. Always remember, keep your pellet box nice and full. Brisket number two, internal temps 203 on the big green egg brisket. And really what we're showcasing here is a um, little bit different trimming styles. And that's why we we're showing you with the different Victorinox knives, the best way to trim these briskets because 
Charcoal and pellet are a little bit different. We were able to run both of these grills simultaneously and they ran perfect. And we've got our briskets done exactly the same time. Obviously a lot of that comes with experience. So one of the most important things to remember is that you rest these briskets because if you don't rest these briskets, what's gonna happen, you just put this over the fire for 12 hours. All that juice is gonna fall out when we carve them. So into the cooler they go, minimum of an hour, we're gonna let these rest. That's what we talk about with barbecue. It's always better to be over than under. So get this stuff done well ahead of time. You can rest it for a minimum of an hour, even longer. And when we come back, all those juices will have reabsorbed into that muscle and we're gonna carve them up using some of the uh, additional Victorinox tools that we have here. So stay tuned, carve and eating comes up next. The moment you've been waiting for, the briskets have rested inside the cooler now for about two and a half hours. It's time to pull them out. We're gonna put both briskets on our table, Traeger versus Big Green Egg. We're gonna look at the bark on them and we're gonna look at the juiciness and we're gonna taste them. So Scott, snag them. Oh. Did the smell hit you? Yeah. Which one you got first? That's big green oh, egg. Big, big green egg brisket. And the Traeger brisket. So we're gonna go ahead and open the big green egg first. Let's take a peek. <laughs> that, my friends. Look at the jiggle. That looks amazing. I think is pretty much perfect. So, big green egg brisket. Now let's go ahead and open Traeger brisket. And there again, I think that's pretty much darn near perfect as well. You can see this one doesn't have as much fat on it because as we mentioned, it doesn't render down quite as much on the pellet style grill as this one does. You can see uh, it's a little bit larger in size. I should mention, if you remember back at the beginning of the video, both of these briskets came off the same steer, one, one per side. So you can see the size difference. It's because we trimmed this one down more going on the Traeger versus the one going on the Big Green Egg. So at this point, we're gonna get them off the paper and let's just get started slicing. Back to the ultimate competition barbecue set from Victorinox. Number of these knives that you could use to slice this. This is just their slicing knife, the Cementar, or the um, just the slicer. Today, I think we're just gonna use the Victorinox slicer. Pretty cool blade. If you're serving this up to maybe some guests, you know, you're, you're giving out individual slices, you don't have to worry about poking somebody or, or anything like that. So let's just go, go ahead and get started. And with this brisket, you wanna cut against the grain. So we're gonna go ahead and start up at this, at this point on the flat, we're gonna start at the point on the flat. Then we're gonna work our way down to the point. We'll change direction a little bit and we'll go from there. So let's just go ahead and we're gonna cut into this and see what we got. So at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and separate the point from the flat. We're gonna take a peek. Look at that. That looks amazing. Juice is just running out of there. Let's just slice down through here and see what we have. This is just falling apart tender. Super juicy. Looks like it's gonna be some amazing brisket. Go ahead and take some slices off of the flat. Now what I wanna do is go ahead and take a few slices off this point as well. You can see we changed directions on there. This is gonna have that fat seam in it that we talked about earlier in the video. At this point, I think we go ahead and just give her a little taste test. There you go, Scott. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. 
combo. Wow. Wow. That is really, really good. That's some phenomenal brisket, bro. So tender. All those smoke flavors are coming through. It just really is. Yeah, I got the I got the hickory. I mean, the mouth feels incredible because it's just so tender and moist. But then I got the hickory right up front and then right behind it, I got the Bearded Butcher Blend Original. And it was simply divine. I mean, just just look at that. It literally just, it just falls apart. You can just take it and, but it's not dried out at all. Mm. Unreal. All right, big green egg brisket sliced. Now let's do the same thing on the Traeger brisket. Same thing, super juicy. I am noticing maybe just a little bit more of that outer smoke ring on that one and it's probably because we took more of that fat off, uh, that fat cover initially. Just go ahead and start slicing against the grain. You wanna see what it looks like, don't you? So do I. Look at that. And I bet you that's just gonna pull apart. You ready for this again, bro? I can, I can do this all day. There you go. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, mm. black right off the bat. Mm. Tasted that bl that black seasoning, money. So, big green egg brisket. I was tasting that hickory smoke from those those rockwood wood chunks coming through. Yep, right off the bat. With the Traeger brisket, I'm noticing the black seasoning with that coffee rub right off the bat. And you can see this one has a little bit darker color. We we mentioned bark earlier in the video and that's why because that black seasoning creates that that bark on the outside of that brisket so i'm gonna go ahead and slice it up just a little bit more let's get a little bit of that point sliced so there's that flat let's go ahead and slice some of that point you can see there again I keep talking about that bark. That's what everybody's shooting for, that smoke ring. A lot of people think you can't achieve that on a Traeger. You absolutely can. So neck and neck, these briskets were pretty darn near close, I think, um, wouldn't you say? All the they way through. They taste very similar. Um, <clears throat> you got a little something in your beard. <laughs> That's, uh, they taste very similar. And you know, it wasn't so much about the cooking today. It was more about the tools that are associated with this. This entire cook, the process, um, obviously we butchered this steer. You saw Seth break the briskets out of the steer. Um, beautiful Angus steer that we butchered right here at White Feather Meats. We take the briskets, we showed you two little, uh, two different trimming styles. One, if you're gonna go more towards a pellet smoker, one if you're gonna go to more sort of a charcoal or stick burning smoker. And so what we found out was through the entire process, we used the Victorinox cutting tools, whether we were on the process, or well, begins with the slaughter floor to the processing floor. We encourage anybody that wants a phenomenal blade that they pick up a Victorinox Swiss, Swiss Army knife. Um, a competition set like this obviously is gonna cover all the bases. You can start with one or you can just go right to an eight piece set like this and you're gonna have everything you need in your arsenal. So starts with the cutting tool, and then it moves to the way that we season, the way that we cook. And um, we're gonna put a link in the description for all the tools that we use today. So you too can enjoy the, this same experience at home. Um, we also wanna remind you, Bearded Butcher Blend Seasoning, go to beardedbutchers.com. You'll find all the spices, all the sauce that you need to season and spice and sauce this, uh, I, this up just right. So it looks like Seth's getting ready to I'm building do, you a, so, do something wonderful I'm, I'm here. I'm building you a sandwich. Do you want barbecue or you want Rebel Red on it? I want to start with barbecue, okay. and then I'll have another one with have Rebel two Red. Sandwiches. So our sauces, 12 ounce bottle. This is available uh, on our website in a bottle, or you can get that same flavor in a half gallon 
like this on our website. So let's go ahead and hook Scott up first with a brisket sandwich with some of that barbecue sauce on it. Now this barbecue sauce has our original seasoning in it for a base. Doesn't that look incredible? Give her a try. I can't wait. Oh man. Oh, whisker looking good. Like we like to say, it's all about food, family, faith. It starts with the butcher process and it ends with something like this. We want to say from beer to butcher blend seasoning, the beer to butchers. We hope you enjoyed the video. Reminder, subscribe and also follow us on our other platforms. We'll continue bringing you more content like this. See you soon in the future. It's summertime in Ohio. What better way to celebrate than smoke brisket? Whether you're using the Big Green Egg or you're using the Trigger Grill, we love both. We highly recommend both. Until next time, cheers. I gotta talk about this machine for a minute. Somebody's gonna ask. This is our dad's 1951 Panhead kickstart, no front brake, hand shift, foot clutch. You know, dad being a Vietnam vet rode right when he got back from Vietnam and he's been riding bikes ever since. So true American blooded all the way through. Just so everybody knows, we're working on a history uh, video of the Perkins family. We already filmed a segment of dad. So if you want to learn more about our old man, stay tuned because we're going to do a, a history video on all the members here, uh, the Bearded Butchers at White Feather Meats. This bike means a lot to us. It's our old man's. You can't even put a price on something like this. So he built it too. I remember from the frame, from the ground up, dad built this bike. It's pretty cool. Had to show you.